Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, this is the summary for the day of 782 for the 15th of April and actually also the Frontline Changes Report. The Frontline Changes Report will be separated uh, into two videos, uh, Frontline Changes and SIP Wrap uh, for the main channel. So for those that want, want to watch the whole, in, whole full SIP Wrap including the Situation Report, the Strategic Tactical Reporting, uh, go over to DPA War Channel. Uh, if not, then you will be a delayed telecast on the main channel. But Frontline Changes Report first. The first thing first is Ivanivsky. There is this very weird geolocation uh, of Ukrainian forces within uh, Ivanivsky again or over on this western part of the village and uh this means that the entire russian claim that they have taken all this forest is now uh in question uh because if the ukrainians can go into the village again which means that there is actually no clear russian presence uh in these areas so in this uh which means that the possibility of russian presence in this area might only be just a few squads or you know some from some platoons are trying to you know see how far they can go, and then after that they actually withdrew to previous positions, which is why we have this uh invalidation of Russian claims. So uh so this geolocation is uh basically made made the battle return to Ivanisky again, uh which we actually do see with the reports coming from the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. The latest report talk about fighting at Ivanisky, so this is uh instead of talking about Chasifia. So uh, this is the Ivanisky region. We move into the Adyevka uh, front. So Adyevka front, there is a, a, a few frontline change mainly uh, over the Novo Babutivka region and the Semenivka region. At the Novo Babutivka region, as you ha may have watched yesterday's frontline changes report, uh, which, which was this. This was the yesterday's frontline changes report. And oh, in just a span of 24 hours, Russians have improved their in positions and move towards Oteritine and Novo Bamutivka. This is exactly what I've mentioned, that the Russian forces is going to head towards Oteritine and in this direction, as well as Novo Bamutivka. So this uh, turned out to be true, but just in the span of 24 hours, Russian forces have actually progressed very far. We're talking about like one, one over one kilometers towards Oteritine and uh, towards Novo B uh, Novo Bamutevka, we are talking about a distance of one kilometers, which means that the entire Ukrainian lines around here has actually collapsed. Is 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 gone. The Ukrainians have actually do a mass redrawal, uh, all tactical redrawal towards Ocheritine and Novo Bamutevka to make their new stand, new defensive position. So the Russian forces are now pushing through at great speed. Uh, in this area here, of course, one kilometer. I mean. Even we walk, we will walk more than one kilometers a day. But you no, know, but in a in a place where there's full of mines and snipers and machine gun fires, drone attacks, one kilometer is massive, massive, massive uh, changes in terms of this area here. So uh, the next frontline change uh, is over at Bedaichi, just south of this. Uh, Ukrainian uh, uh, Ukrainian mapping have gave up uh, so Deep State UA has said that the Russian forces have taken this area here. So. Uh, so other than the invalidation of some of these uh, areas just south of Bedaichi, this entire area here, this is actually not even acknowledged by the Russian side, uh, is now considered captured under Ukrainian mapping. So we have acknowledged this change and now the Russians have basically taken everything east of this river region at Semenivka. So this is massive, massive changes. So the next frontline change is over at Krasnohorivka. It, uh, over at the Donetsk front. So this Donetsk city and uh, this Krasnohorivka, just now we were at here, uh, just north of this position. At the Battle of Krasnohorivka, we have new updates. So yesterday we talked about the Russian forces expanding in these two directions. In the latest, we have a geolocation of Russian forces over at the railway station. And uh, this geolocation means that the Russian forces have actually penetrated through towards the center region and this is actually as far as it, uh, the previous uh, the round one of the Battle of, uh, of Krasnohorivka was uh, this was as far as the Russians managed to go the previous time but though in that time the Russians attacked from the south this time around the Russians attacking from the east and uh, so the front line is now looked like this with a finger you know moving in uh, in that direction so it must be very ticklish for the Ukrainians uh, so the and uh, the next frontline change is south of this position of near to Solotke. Uh, 
So over here, there is the geolocation of Russian forces uh, being attacked in this area here by FBV drone. This signals that the Russian presence in the area here. So there is this front line change in this area to signify, uh, to, to reflect this position of the Russian forces. Solid K is ease of this position. So and uh, the next final front line change is over at Staro Mayoske. So Staro Mayoske is a Belican Novosilka sector of the Donetsk front, the most western part of the Donetsk front. And uh, there is front line change uh, based on the Ukrainian mapping they have gave up this position again uh so this this pair of shoe here uh previously was claimed by the ukrainian side to to be taken in the counter attack and uh, i i did still put it as a gray zone because it was a one-sided claim and uh this time around they gave up this this area again so i'm not sure if it's due to 40 intel uh that they thought that they have captured their position actually they didn't that you always it always has been under Russian control after the Russians capture it. Or it could be uh, due to uh, their inability to hold that forward position due to Russian pressure and then they have to redraw back into Staro Mayoske. Uh, that is also a possibility. Uh, my own opinion is that uh, it is too difficult to hold this position because this is way too far away. They can't re really redraw to Staro Mayoske because it's a bit too far and it's uh, full of open area here. So if they redraw, it was going to be northward, um, so northward through, through the western part of Staro Mayoske. Either way, the Russian forces have taken this position uh, back uh, and basically corroborates Russian claims. Basically, if you can see the Russian claims, is basically exactly the same area. So, which which is why I also uh, alluded to the possibility that the Ukrainian claim uh, on the cap the recapture of that tree line might actually be faulty. So, that's all for the frontline changes report. For those watching on the um, main channel, uh, on the just purely on the frontline changes report. Thank you for watching. Do press the like button, subscribe, and uh, for those that want to continue to watch the strategy and tactical reporting, you can jump straight over to DPA War channel, or you can wait for the SIP wrap alone, uh, to be published on the main channel. So, uh, we continue to the strategy and tactical reporting. Uh, first thing first, uh, is over in the southern front as we go anti-clockwise direction. Fight, uh, fighting at Krinky continues to be reported according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry on both days. Uh, Krinky, as you can see, Krinky again. So the the cringy uh, cringy battle over at this area here continues. Uh, so I really have nothing much to say more uh, because this is such a pointless battle around this area here. Um, and uh, there is also other news. Uh, basically, there is bombardment being reported at Mikolaivka, according to the Russian Defense Ministry. And uh, if we zoom out, there is a geolocation uh, over at uh, uh, Gavrilivka or Herilivka. Uh, so there is a geolocation of a, a Russian guided missile attack from a helicopter, I believe, uh, at this position. So. And then uh, otherwise, that's all for this uh, Kherson front. And we move into the Zaporizhia front. And before we reach there, there is a uh, there is Shaolin reported over at Chakolove. Uh, Chakolove. Uh, this is reported by the Russian Defense Ministry. Uh, nothing much to talk about. It's basically the Russians are uh, part of the Russian continuous attempt to you know bombard Ukrainian uh, gathering of forces when when wherever they can find them, over across the Dnipro River opposite of the uh, the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Over at the Zaporizhia front, uh, at the Zaporizhia front, uh, we have fighting continuing continuing to be reported over at Robotini. Uh, th this time around, we also have fighting reported northwest of Verbove on the, uh, over the past 24 hours, as well as southwest of Bilokia, yeah, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. There is, multi there is some geolocations along the road from uh, Nova Danilivka moving towards to Robotine. Uh, geolocation of Ukrainian forces getting hit by FPV drone as well as uh, also FPV drones. So, and uh, so... Ukrainian forces continue to go down this road to, to reinforce their position at Robotine, which is a suicide mission. And uh, this particularly, there is also, you know, uh, this 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 one particular one was a group of soldiers walking down the road and then they got just hit by FPV drone. Uh, quite disastrous. Uh, this is a pickup truck. So, it's, it, as I mentioned before, this is an extremely... Uh, 
not helpful position to hold because the Russian forces are way too close to this road and uh, they don't have enough buffer zone and not to mention that uh, Russians still have a lot of drones and it's in an increasing amount and uh, there is Lancet and FPV drones is making things very difficult. Uh, at Orekiv, there's a Lancet, as I just mentioned. Lancet usually are uh, used to hit bigger targets. And this time around, they are they use this to hit the M0, uh, M109 Paladin self-propelled artillery. And uh, so there goes another artillery gun. So that's all uh, That's all from this Orekiv sector. Over at Stepove, there was an FPV drone attack on Ukrainian positions, showing Ukrainian presence over at Stepove. Uh, and uh, over at the Huaipole sector, we have... Uh, Joe location of country uh counter battery fire uh against the M triple seven over at Zalishne. Uh, Zal Zalishne, correct. And uh, over at uh Priloki, I believe it is called Priloki, correct? Uh, at Priloki there is a Lancet hitting a, a Ukrainian tank. So so these are the various uh, geolocated stuff. Over at Huey Police Sector, we have fighting reported at Javone, according to the Russian Defense Ministry on the 14th of April. But the fact that it's not reported on the 15th means that it's just a one-off attack. So that's all over at the Zaporizhia front. We move into the Donetsk front. And this this is the Donetsk front. Uh, so and uh, at the Velikon over... Okay, we just go on the strategic so we don't overdo it. Um, there is fighting reported north of Prione over at Staro Mayoske at Uruzaine. And uh, there is fighting reported towards Vodian. Uh, there is battle of Novo Mihailivka going on at Prione. There is still fighting and battle of Krasnohorivka is ongoing. So this is the strategic situation over this area here. Um, the battles around the Velika Novosilka sector on the Russian side uh, continues to be rather uh, positional in nature. There is no idea what the hell is happening about the Vodian direction uh, near the Voleda, in the Voleda sector. Uh, Marinka sector, of course, we have the Battle of Novo Mihailivka ongoing. Uh, Russian forces pushing out or pushing out of Priyotne. No, not is that is that Priyotne? No, no, no. It's uh, Boyeda, sorry. At uh, Boyeda, as well as the uh, Battle of Krasnohorivka is going into high gear. Um, at, at this, uh, on the Velikan Novo Silka sector, there is a dual location of Russian airstrike at Uruzaine. This is an ongoing thing that it had op happened so many times. Uruzaini is as flat as you can go, um, given any village uh, to go because the Russians have thrown so much airstrikes and uh, artillery as well as uh, thermal barrier missiles at that location. Uh, the, the restart of the battle in the north of Prione is interesting. The last battle was on the 28th of March. Russian forces reportedly is attacking according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. Uh, we will continue to see whether this develops to, into anything. Uh, Otherwise, with the frontline change showing that the Russians have retaken this tree line, uh, it does show that uh, the Russians want to maintain a certain line uh, around Staro Mayoske, uh, but do not want to capture this area here. They want to continue to draw in Ukrainian forces into this area here. Uh, Staro Mayoske and Uruzaine is very important because there is a road leading this, uh, connecting these two villages or these two towns. So it is strategically uh, important uh, because it allows forces to uh, swap sides across the river however this is also a death trap uh, the russians have have the clearly the firepower and the manpower to keep to capture it the two villages constantly getting bombarded is super flattened that is an easy capture to be honest uh, but the russians did not want to take it and the ukrainians continue to send troops there very ai-ish uh, we move into uh so uh, there is this frontline change over in the western part of Solotke. So which means that the Russian forces may be pushing in this direction towards Vodian, which means that the battle, the fighting reported towards Vodian might actually be coming from Solotke direction. But uh, let's see how this goes uh, because there is very, very little bit of a uh, very, very little news of reporting coming from uh, about this area here by the op open source intelligence and the sources. Uh, there is basically not much news about Novo Mihailivka anymore. So I believe the Russians are currently holding positions uh, and are doing skirmishes rather than going on assault. Uh, Boyeda direction is a bit uh, still also very unclear. Uh, the, the Based on previous reports, we know that the Russian forces are pushing in two different directions towards uh, Konstantinivka and towards Antonivka. Either one or both. So that's all from Boyeda. Uh, as, as I mentioned in the frontline changes report, Ukrainian forces have retaken uh, Georgievka and they are moving uh, 
the moving the front line or rather that the Russian forces are unable to hold that front line and uh, now the front line is basically along the lake. And uh, Joe location of Russian airstrike on Ukrainian port position south of Georgievka and a battle of Krasnohorivka of course went into another gear with Russian forces now uh, Joe located right in the center of the southern part of Krasnohorivka and there is all around there was actually a uh, shelling of Ukrainian forces over in the southern part uh, that this one is a uh, strike might be actually an airstrike and uh, this one is uh, actually a mortar attack so there is multiple uh, Joe location of a uh, location of Ukrainian forces getting hit all over all over the place. Russian forces is probably securing this entire area here, uh, the entire south um, southeastern part of Krasnohorivka, creating a strong strong position, a foothold, to allow them to now attack in all directions if they choose to. So, and the first and the first direction that they choose to attack is uh, towards the center of the southern part to capture the railway line and uh, with this if they can actually go go on to cut off the entire southern part of the Krasnohorivka which means that Ukrainian forces currently holding defensive position here is starting to feel a bit stupid and they will have to do counter attack to secure their retreat routes uh, if they fail to do so they will be encircled uh, so this is not uh, not fun so they will have to do this counter attack in the reverse direction towards in their direction in their own direction towards the direction of their home base this may also allow the russian forces to uh, attack them in their rear as they as they try to push towards the railway station the russians may take advantage and actually hit them in the rear and then uh, create a accidental pincer attack on themselves and uh, basically uh, the operation and circumvent so we will continue to monitor how this goes. Uh, Ukrainian forces are not doing nothing. Uh, while the Russian forces are holding all this position, the Rus uh, Ukrainian forces are bombarding them uh, with air possible airstrikes and uh, heavy artillery. So the Ukrainians are definitely trying. But uh, artillery situation for the Ukrainians right now is a bit uh, scarce. They are not having enough shells. So uh, every attack, uh, every artillery attack is very precious. Uh, they may not be able to do what they do previously in the earlier part of the war where they can actually use overwhelming artillery fire to uh, block off uh, Russian offensive. This time around, things are going to be a bit or oh, actually a lot more trickier for the Ukrainian forces. Uh, further north of Krasnohorivka, FPV drones are hunting U Ukrainian positions as well. So, you know, uh, so this is definitely, you know, uh, not very fun for the Ukrainians. Further up in the west, there is Russian airstrike over at Hostre, uh, a massive airstrike around this area here. So, uh, situation is very bad. It looks like the Russians are pushing in two different directions. With the primary direction over at Krasnohorivka, I think they are very determined to capture this city, given the amount of investment coming to this area here. And then, uh, fighting at Boyeda direction and Georgivka seems to be the uh, diversionary. With the main push is over at Krasnohorivka. So, Ukrainian forces are now going to be caught in between uh, deciding whether to you know, reinforce the other positions or actually you know, concentrate their reinforcement towards Krasnohorivka. And this is not even talking about Novomihailivka, where the Russians have been making huge push in this uh, direction. <clears throat> we move into the DFK front. Uh, before we go there, there is, a, there is a strike, a missile strike on Ukrainian field camp uh, west of Porovsky, Porov, Pokrovs. And uh, according to the images coming out it seems like some uh smudge like a uh, smudge version of the ukrainian smudge version of the mlrs getting destroyed and a uh, smudge can fire super f a long distance 50 to 70 kilometers if i'm not wrong and the front line is basically exactly where the almost where the the maximum uh, distance is the front line is around 45 kilometers away so this is actually positioned exactly where they can actually fire barrages into uh, Russian territory or Russian controlled areas. So this is actually correct position, but it still got hunted down, uh, captured by drone. Uh, they, the drones are hunting for all these vehicles and and once discovered, a missile strike is launched. So you no, know, this is, the Russians are getting really good at this kind of thing and are hunting for equipments in the rear positions. Uh, so we move on to the ADFK front. ADFK front, Russian forces continue to step up 
on their offensive in this direction, fighting reporter at Novo Kalinove, towards Ocheritine, towards Novo Bamotivka, at Badaichi, at Semenivka, at Umanske, Netalove, Povomaiske, Ukrainian forces counterattack at Povomaiske, towards Vodian, at Umanske, Badaichi, and over at uh, Novo Bamotivka. So the Uk Russian forces are ex expanding expanding their control in this area here, particularly towards Ocheritine and Novo Bamotivka as the main push. Uh, Netolove will be the next target over this area here. Umanske will be also the village to watch. And uh, Semenivka is on the edge uh, on the verge of collapse and uh, it's going to shift the front line over to this uh, Novo Borovsky line. So this is good. The next line is going to be around here. Let me draw in another color. This is going to be the next line. So, uh, and uh, this collapse is coming too fast because this line will become invalidated. It will become useless. If the Russian capture uh, Ocheritine, they will just go into the rear position, totally bypass the entire newly built defense line. This defense line around here, along the water bodies, uh, this is actually the desperately you know, built a uh, defense line by the Ukrainian forces while the Russians was actually you know uh, fighting for Tonenke you know Letoshkine the Ukrainian forces actually you know the give up and uh, sacrifice a lot of troops in this area here and at Chivane to make time for the Ukrainian forces to build this line around here uh, let me move this border here <laughs> uh, I've realized everything is squeezing to the to the to the left so and and the, the Ukrainian forces have gave up so much troops trying to hold the Russians back around on the western part of Adyevka to build this line. Now the Russian forces are able to bypass by capturing Ocheritine and Novo Bomotivka and just go to the rear and this will just collapse the entire newly built front line. This is what is currently happening. So this is horrible uh, for the Ukrainians because the prepared line, the prepared line from Novo the Novo Provsky line to Novo Siliska Praha, this entire line that I should draw to in blue. This entire line is wasted. Entirely wasted. Because the Russians can totally not touch it. And this is this line is also very heavy because there was pre-war and uh entrenchments. You can see this is a pre-war entrenchment. Another heavy fortress uh, over here, and another heavy fortress over here. So the Russian forces and uh, there's one more here over at uh, north of Sokil. So this all this this entire line and uh, this new line is is the new defensive line. And then the Russians just say bye bye go on the north. <sighs> Disastrous. So anyway other uh, uh, so this is the current situation as the frontline changes report I already mentioned Russian forces have captured this much ground in two days. Two days in two days this is the amount of grounds captured in two days so this is this literally means the ukrainian lines around here have totally collapsed there is no other way to describe this you know uh then collapse it, it just broke through the russians just broke through and this threatens the entire strategic nature uh, strategic posture in this front line uh so that's bad uh in terms of geolocation, location we, at mojove uh we have geolocation location of uh, counter artillery action uh there is over at uh Semenivka, russian forces geolocated located in the center which means that just a little bit more russian forces will be can capturing the entire of Semenivka. and uh so that's that's it man the entire attack at novo kalinove seems to be a uh, diversion so we previously we have this massive attack coming from the south of Novo, Novo Kalinove as well as the eastern part and uh, they were swapping between the two the two two directions uh in the span of three days and this probably drew a lot of Ukrainian reinforcement into Novo Kalinove to plug the hole in this area here and maybe maybe this deep redeployment ex uh, got exploited by the Russians to make this massive push which means that they actually they do they did a mini uh faint left hook right and then a faint right hook left then suddenly the actually the sucker punch actually coming from the west this is actually the real attack they first they attack here then they they faint here attack here and then they faint here attack here and then here is this is actually the the major the real push can you imagine that? <laughs> the, how are the Ukrainians are going to cope with this? 
oh my god so you know the russians are really starting to you know show off you no know, they really start to show off they're doing the muhammad ali you know punch me here punch me there i'm not there you know then you know then they start to shake his body okay so so that's all from the the afghan front over at the new york front uh at the new york front the russian forces are attacking new york in the towards the new york direction in the both days uh so they are putting pressure on the Ukrainian forces around this area. But as I mentioned, it's impossible that the Russians are heading in this direction. It's a pointless battle. Because, uh, so these are probably just, uh, you know, probings. Because if you look at the number of heavy entrenchment around around here, it's just, uh, re they, it's just pointless. There's just, there's just no point for the, for the Russians to break through this uh, heavy, heavy, heavy line around here. There's just no point. So just go around it. You know, New York is a very vulnerable uh, city. There's no point to you know, attack it. Uh, over at the Bakhmut front, in the southern flank of the Bakhmut front, uh, we have south of Dilyevka, a Ukrainian radar getting hit. Not sure what kind of radar is that. Maybe counter artillery radar given it's so close to the front line. And uh, in the southern flank, of the Bakhmut front, Russian forces attacking Klishyevka, Andriyevka, as well as Kudyumivka. So this is currently the situation in the southern front. And now uh, we move into the northern front. In the northern front, Russian forces continue to attack over in the Bodanivka region after the capture. Towards Norway, they are flattening, straighten the front line south of Norway. They are attacking towards Chasifia and in the direction of Ivaniske. Uh, the fact that Ukrainian forces geolocated in the western part of Ivaniske invalidated the entire Russian claim on the western part of Ivaniske right now. And uh, there's no location of uh, FPV drones hitting Ukrainian forces within Novi itself, uh, wrong color, as well as uh, just uh, there's an artillery hitting you no know, northwest of Chasifia. So this is the current strategic situation over in this uh, Chasifia direction in the Bakhmut front. Uh, Russian forces continue to push. But uh, as I mentioned before, this is an extremely difficult uh, place to, to fight. Uh, I still don't understand why the Russians want to push in this direction. This is a very, very difficult place to fight. Uh, and I mentioned before, this forest is extremely you no know, advantageous for the Ukrainians and you, you clearly we see with the Ukrainians appearing over in this uh, western part of Ivaniske, which means that the Ukrainians actually still do have easy control over this forest, which means that the entire uh, Russian claim that the Russians have taken this area here with, in a massive Ukrainian redrawal seems to be invalidated for now. Uh, because there is a one-sided claim. Uh, in terms of the Ukrainian side, they never acknowledge something like that had happened. So anyway, we'll continue to monitor this Bakhmut front. <coughs> and then we move into the Sivas front. At the Sivas front, Russian forces continue to put pressure. Uh, fighting report at Milohorivka towards Overkan ok ok Okanyamske at Sperne, Joe location of Russian forces southwest uh, southeast of Vimka, as well as Ukrainian counterattack over at Vesele. But the counterattack is only for one day on the 14th. So this counterattack probably have failed. So this is the strategic situa situation at the Severs front. We move into the criminal front. At the criminal front, Russian forces attacking uh, turning as usual and this time around we have a return of the fighting at Toske. the last attack was on the 12th previously it was two months ago uh, so we will continue to monitor i got a feeling that uh, the russians may start to do a massive offensive in the criminal direction because the ukrainians are are struggling to keep up with the russians so so because there is a lancet attack on the ukrainian uh of uh, temporary position so there was two two of the two two vehicles two trucks you no know, parking next to each other they have uh, some sat satellite dish or uh, solar panel thing they are like it was it's like a checkpoint so and then it was destroyed uh, everyone died uh, in the lancet attack and uh, so this which means that the russians may be actually you know looking at doing a massive offensive towards liman a possibility so because something is brewing Something is not right. This area is too quiet. And uh, the fighting restarting at Toske does seems to be, uh, it, it might be actually some kind of uh, uh, combat, by, uh, no, reconnaissance by combat. That means uh, they are scouting uh, by sending forces forward. And if they, if they contacted the enemy, they started to have a firefight, they know the enemy is there. So this could be the case that is currently happening at Toske. They're trying to figure out where the Ukrainian forces 
are after not fighting for two months and the Russians may be planning something big. So uh, we, will, we will definitely have to keep a lookout for this front line, uh, the Crimea front, and uh, who knows, this might change its name to the Liman front. So we move on further up north. Over at Sviatove, uh, we have news fighting reported at uh, St uh, Stemakivka, according to the Russian Defense Ministry on the 14th, but is, this is not reported on the 15th, so th this could be a one-off attack. Uh, so that's all for this Sviatove front. We move into the Kupians front. At the Kupians front, uh, there is more vector of attack appearing. So we have Sinkivka, and uh, we have this fighting rope reporter at uh, Zagorov Kivka. And uh, Zagorov Kivka is actually, you know, a pretty recent. It just started on the 14th. So uh, this is a new attack. And then now in the latest, on the 15th, we have a Kotelevka also starting to fight again. The last attack was a month ago. So who knows, Kupians run may start to you know, start to flare up again. So as the Ukrainians are definitely struggling and um, given the pause, the two months pause at the Kupians, Kremina front, Sviatove front, Ukrainian forces may be uh, very tempted and uh, to move heavy equipment and uh, reinforcement or ammo to the other active front line. And if they actually do that, then they will leave all these quiet fronts uh, bare or lacking, which means that the Russians, if they start to attack in these directions, will have it easier. And uh, this this is currently, you know, rather the rather you no know, desperate for the ukrainian side over at the kharkiv region at the kharkiv region this no longer is the active front line uh, per se it's just now positional russian forces continue to grind away at ukrainian forces there is a uh, radar the iris iris t surface to air missile system getting hit uh, over here this is in the south east of kharkiv city and then there is also a lancet strike northeast of uh, northeast of Kharkiv and then in a border region there is uh, artillery hitting Ukrainian forces at Hotivka and uh, another one over uh, artillery hitting at the uh, veterinary uh, over here as well as one more this is also artillery hitting at Ukrainian forces over at Lemish Shiny so we have all these attacks in the past 48 hours so yeah, Kharkiv front continues to be, you know, very itchy. I, I feel like, you no know, Russians, Russia may in the near future start to consider very seriously about offensive. But at this moment, Kharkiv front is very, very heavily defended by the Ukrainian side, which is why I think this uh, softening operation will continue for some time before the Russians feel confident enough to actually launch an attack. So, I mean, that's all. This is the summary for the day of 782 for the 15th of April. Press the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next. Wait, support me on Patreon. I need more money. <laughs> I'm running low on funds uh, because too low views, so no revenue. Help me. I'll see you guys in the next update.